Hello and welcome back. I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel Video 258. I spoke for North Carolina and then for Illinois MGMA last week. We spent several hours talking about pivot tables and data mining and the kind of things you can do with your data. I'd love to speak for your organization at your next meeting. What I want to do today is continue the discussion of filling down and right and left and everything we talked about last time. We started filling and then at the very end, remember, we did the first month of every quarter and we said, ah, oh, you know what, we can drag that down. We'll teach Excel a pattern or a sample that it can follow and Excel takes it from there. I want to follow along that idea today and show you several different ways to get Excel to recognize patterns as you fill. You can do easy mathematical things like odd numbers and Excel can take that with a drag down and that works. You can do, you know, increments of five say and that all works fine and good and maybe you're trying to do increments of five or 15 minute in intervals or something like that. Problem is this is going to keep going way past 60. But that's not a big deal because if you set up in some kind of increment or an interval in time format, Excel can take that too. See here I've got hour and a half blocks for whatever reason and I can take this pattern that I've developed here, drag it down and Excel will just run with it from there and say, hey, every hour and a half I'll set up another appointment or another schedule or another whatever it is I'm doing. So if you teach Excel a pattern with a couple to go from, Excel can take the pattern and run with it. If you don't do it that way, there's another way to go after this. If I did something like this and drag it down, Excel guesses that, hey, maybe Nate wants January 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. If it didn't get it right, there are a couple of ways to attack it. One way is to go over here to the Fill menu, and from this drop down, we're going to go to Series. And instead of doing day, we can do weekday or month or year. Let's just do month for a minute. And now I've got January, February, March, April. Or if I go series and year, I can go from 2012 to 13 to 14 to 15 to 16. So what I did was I started, well, let's just undo my way back. I started with just one rather than a sample. And then when I dragged down, I just went to the fill menu and went to series and said, hey, I'm going to work it from there. Excel recognizes it's a date. We'll just say do month instead, and Excel takes it and goes. That's one way to do it. Let me undo that back. Another way to get to this same functionality, I've been left clicking to drag. If I right click and drag, I get the same kind of thing. It's going to January 9th, but Excel will bring up a little uh, menu that says, all right, what do you want to do? Do you want to copy the cells? No, I don't want to do that. I can fill the series with and without formatting. I'm going to come down here and just fill months, and there you go. And if I say no, now what I, let's just undo, now what I want to do is, whoops, I got to right click. I can fill years. And it just takes it and runs with it from there. So let's do one more. If I have two and four here, I could do right click and down and do a linear trend, two, four, six, eight. Let me undo that. I could also right click and drag down and say no, what I want here is a growth trend and it'll 2, 4, 8, 16, and so 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th power, see how that's going. And again, what am I doing? I'm just right click my drag down and saying how do I want to do this. There are all kinds of ways you can play with this series menu. We've kind of talked a little bit about dates and about types. We're going to play a little bit more with this step value and stop value. And we'll do that next time. Thanks for watching.